Hey guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy V! Last time we finished up the Fort Tower! Um, I, one thing I did forget to, mo to mention there, and I did uh, leave a little annotation for it, was that uh, the enemy... Where's my dash? Dash, there it is. Uh, the uh, Minotaur enemy that we fought was the uh, one that the other Minotaur guy that we fought uh, in the previous dungeon was saying to watch out for. And that, uh, I believe, is the first reference to the Brothers GF that we get in Final Fantasy VIII. So, a little, uh, little bit of uh, background there, which is nice. And after finishing up uh, the Fork Tower, the uh, tower disappears. We get access to the catapult once again, and somehow Mid gets here. I'm not quite sure how that works. Come to think of it, back when Kara and Bartz were running away, we were running on a chocobo on rivers, and somehow Ferris caught us. How did she manage that? We didn't see her on a hear you, so... What gives? Regardless, let's, uh, let's move on. No time to act silly. This is the exact time to act silly. In fact, after we finish up this right here... Yeah, by the way, we're getting our, uh, a submarine back. You know, nothing is impossible to Zid. But yeah, after this, we're going to show off a bunch of glitches. Well, not a bunch of glitches. Specifically, three battle-only glitches. And we get the uh, speed up of the music and the after images once again. Yay! I, I just love the atmosphere that uh, these older games had. Both for the silly moments and for these moments. Such a hard worker, huh? Well, he does believe it's his fault. He did invent the machines that uh, apparently, you know, leached out the uh, power of the crystals a little earlier than they otherwise would have. However, from what we heard uh, from Gullif and all the, these other people, it would have happened nonetheless. This time, he wants to make sure his skills will be used for peace, so he's going to supply us with a weapon, well, a means of transportation so that we can fight everything. Press the A button and select the down arrow when you want to go underwater. Thank you. Well, that was nice of you. Sorry about that. I uh, just got interrupted there real quick. But anyway, Sid can't use swords or shields or anything for that matter because he's not a party member. But he can help us improve our machines and allow us to get back on the road so we can do all the things we need to do to save the world. The rest is up to us, though. Doesn't matter how many times we hear this song, I'm loving it every single time. One of my favorite themes in the game, just because of how adventurous and how uplifting it is. It reminds me... And I mentioned uh, Dragon Rider, I believe, from Chrono Cross. Another song from the Chrono series it reminds me of is the one called uh, Determination, I believe, from Chrono Trigger itself. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, another tablet lies at the bottom. The remaining two tablets, in fact, uh, require the airship, or uh, the submarine, in order to access. And I guess those two have a little bit in common with uh, their grandfathers taking huge amounts of responsibility onto themselves. Um, of course, Gullif being one of the four warriors of Dawn, and Sid trying to help everybody else out with uh, all these machines. It's a nice little bit of a uh, little bit of background on these characters. Even though I love the Super Nintendo age for all of the uh, things that it does and the interesting things that it can do uh, with characters and how it does its story and its music and all that, the lack of development is kind of an issue. But anyway, um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go off screen. I'm going to set up for some of the uh, glitches I want to show up. Most of them involve battles. So... Okay, here we are. I don't know anything about these enemies. It doesn't really matter. First thing of note is Ferris. That doesn't matter. They still have wall rings on. Fine, whatever. 
Ferris has the Mirage robot, and as soon as someone attacks you, you're going to lose access to that Mirage. However, in Glitchin, I think every version prior to the iOS release of the game, if you switch weapons partway into battle, or at least you're supposed to, maybe I have to unequip it entirely first, and then re-equip, re-equip one, it's supposed to, uh, there you go, it, after you make your turn, it'll reset up Mirage. Um, so that's a glitch anytime up to the iOS version of the game that you can exploit if you're so interested in doing that. Uh, next one. All right, to set up the next one, we need to make a little bit of a change here. Uh, you need your top character to be in the normal or bear or freelancer job class, depending on translation. And you want them equipped with a ribbon, a white robe or an angel robe, and a guard ring, otherwise known as a protect ring. Um, for the particular one that I am trying to make work, uh, I want the javelin equipped in the left hand and any shield in the right hand. Uh, in order to do this, we also need somebody to have dimension magic and be able to kill themselves in battle. So I think we're pretty much all set up to go. Now apparently this one only works about 25% of the time, and I've never seen it work myself, so if it doesn't work, we will cut until I can eventually make it work. Assuming I can make it work at all. So the idea here, guard here, is first things first, cast quick with someone who is not your top character. And on one of your turns with that character, you need to kill yourself. So we're gonna cast arrow three, should be able to one shot me. And then we just finish the battle normally. Well, there's some MP, I guess. And if done correctly, and this is just all that is listed, we need all of our other characters to survive here, so if I have to, I will heal. There we go, more than enough damage. And if done correctly, uh, our equipment will have changed. It has not changed. Uh, so I will basically repeat that process over and over and over again. And a bit, like the idea is you're supposed to have the top character with uh, the ribbon, the white robe, or the angel's robe and a guard ring. And depending on what they're equipped with, if they're equipped with nothing, you'll get a different item. If you're equipped with the javelin, it'll cha transform itself into a different item. Um, apparently this works 25% of the time. I've never seen it work, so I'm going to try to get it to work now. But another character, not the top character, needs to cast the quick spell and then kill themselves with one of the uh, attacks from that spell and then win the battle with the other three characters alive. So I'm going to do that a few more times and see if I can get it to work. Okay, we're back. I tried about uh, 20 or 30 times to get that uh, glitch to work. Basically what it is, is it transforms the items held uh, in the hands of your top character. And in my case, it just wouldn't work. Um, according to the wiki, it's a 25% chance to work. I've seen it work. It all depends on what is being equipped in the hand of the top character. And then someone has to use uh, uh, quick and then kill themselves somebody else and then you have to finish the battle with uh, that character dead and all the other three alive and then it's supposed to change one of the hands or one of the items in your arms or in your hands or something like that if you are really particularly interested in looking at this glitch it is available on youtube just look up final fantasy 5 uh, item transformation glitch and you should be able to find it um, in this case, it just didn't work for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the item duplication glitch, um, or the infinite uh, items glitch, depending on how you want to look at it. This one requires somebody with the, uh, steal ability and requires somebody with the throw ability. Um, they don't have to be on the same person, probably easier if they're not. Um, so we just set that up there. As far as equipment goes, you want your thief to, or I guess somebody, I don't think it has to be the thief, but in my case it's a thief, and we want them to have nothing in their hands. And the, the reason for that is we want the item in their hands to be uh, right here in the top spot. So we unequip that, put it there. 
Uh, Ferris has throw ability, and that's pretty much all the preparations you need. Two different characters set up for this, and you need to run into an enemy that you can steal something that is throwable. I don't think it has to be throwable. All I know is that this item is supposed to work. But not if they change the encounter rate since I made a save state. That's not helping. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. So, ow! First things first, we want to equip the item that we unequipped a moment ago, and we want to revive Ferris. The next thing we want to do, I guess, is summon Gollum so we don't die. This guy is actually pretty powerful, one of the reasons why I had actually attempted to do this earlier against a different enemy, but it didn't work. There's Maelstrom. That will reduce everybody to next to no HP, and that's not particularly going to help matters very much. I need to heal somehow. Um, dimension, I'm going to use quick because I need to get a couple of turns in uh, and heal up as best I can here. So, high potion on you. And then white wing. <laughs> After we've equipped the item, what we want to do is we want to throw that empty spot at the enemy, which of course isn't going to do any damage. Then we want to steal from it. Ouch. Hopefully we got our ancient sword right away, and I want to re-summon Gollum in case it went down. And once you've stolen from the enemy, then we want to throw that item that we just stole. So we throw that at the enemy, and we need to heal up again. Shouldn't matter healing up in between doing this. Uh, but yeah, do that. And then this guy is susceptible to instant death and gravity. And would you stop dealing so much frickin' damage? Um, here too, I guess. Oh, you don't, you have Reflect on still. Oh well. But anyway, gravity is the type of damage that Slash is, so we can kill it that way. Doesn't matter where I'm doing all this anyway. But after doing all that, the item in our inventory should show 55 of whatever it is we just stole. And as long as we don't move that from where it is, we should be able to go to any town. Should be a town around here somewhere, isn't it? Where's the town around here? There it is. Let's get into town here. And basically, it allows the, those items to be there uh, infinitely, as long as we don't move them from their spot. We can go and sell them. We can go like that and try and sell them all, and we sell them all. However, if we go back and we sell it one at a time, we'll never run out of them. And it's one way that you can get huge amounts of uh, money all at once, and you'll just never run out, as long as you don't move it and you don't sort your inventory. Um, I believe there's a way to do this if the item that you're trying to steal is not throwable, meaning you'll have to throw that empty spot twice at the enemy before stealing the ancient uh, sword or whatever else you're stealing, and then attempting to throw that at them, uh, which you won't be able to do if it's not something that's throwable. And not every single weapon is throwable. But anyway, there's how to do that. Unfortunately, I couldn't show the other one. Now that we've done that, let's actually accomplish something that's not uh, glitchy. Okay, we're back from all the glitches, and this time we have uh, a couple of different uh, pieces that we have set up here. Most notably, we have Ferris with the uh, Thief Knife, and, well, Thief Knife doesn't matter. Uh, what the Thief Knife does, if I haven't mentioned it, is uh, it will... Uh, 50% of the time you use a normal attack, it becomes a mug, which does exactly what it does in every other Final Fantasy game. Chance to steal as well as an attack. I don't find it particularly useful, but I do want to get another knife that is a lot more useful. The uh, Thief Gloves, we are probably going to want for that. And so what I'm going to do now that I've made that little change is we're going to head this way. And then we're going to go up. And then we're going to go this way. And then we're going to go up. And I'm gonna check the map, because I have no idea where I am. We're gonna go over to the left, since I have no idea where I am. 
we there yet? No. All right. So, where we are here is we're below Istri Falls. Now, this is, uh, well, basically you land, you press the A button, you have a choice of going up or down now that we have the submarine there. Now that we have the submarine, we can go and do the remaining two areas um, that, uh, or the remaining two areas or that have tablets in them. That's the word I'm looking for. And I'm not fighting whoever these guys are. Druids, run away. You could still steal whatever was rare from them, angel rings or something. I don't know. They're expensive, but uh, I don't really need those. At least not right now. Let's go in here. History Falls. And I'll take these guys off screen. You can use both um, level three flare or if you're powered up with a wizard rod or an air lancet, you could also use Sildra. That would work too. That's what I'm gonna do this time since I don't have blue magic at the moment. And the reason I don't have that is because I need dimension magic upcoming. And this is one of the areas that the tablets are in. We're not going to actually do the tablet dungeon for the moment. Uh, I'm just coming here to uh, steal some uh, nice presents. And in order for that, like I said, we need Ferris as a thief. Put Ferris in the back row. Uh, and we also need somebody with dimension magic, which you have, so we can cast reset. Basically, just... He oh, uh, the other thing you may want to do is you may want to give you control. That would probably be helpful. And a coronet. And that. Don't need that. And sure, we'll give you an elf gate, but I don't have anything better for you at the moment. Anyway, we're going to try and find a particular enemy. So let's find that enemy. There we go. Let's see, Alcumia, you're trying to steal from the one in the back, not the uh, frog there. And the reason we want control is because Alcumia, level 47, 4,500 HP, no specific weaknesses. If you use Berserk or Stop or Control, you will prevent her from doing what she normally does, which she has two lines of dialogue, and then she will cast Ribbit on her frog, and then she will cast Darkness on herself or Vanish in other translations, which kills her, gets her out of the way, uh, which we don't want, and it will turn the frog into a Bone Dragon, a Red Dragon, or, some, or uh, a Hydra, I think. Or Gidra. But anyway, yeah, so all she has is Toad and that. So we can cast Toad on her, I guess. Sure, why not? Or you could use Fight on the uh, other guy. I believe she's immune to that anyway. But we want to steal from her, and her common item is a Maiden's Kiss. Um, so yeah, you can just fight the frog. So yeah, if the frog ends up, you know, if you cast Toad yourself on the frog, it will turn into... Uh, It'll turn into something we don't want it to be, but when it's in toad mode, it's not going to really do anything to hurt us. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset over and over and over again until we get the rare steal, the four or six or whatever percent steal it is. Yay! Okay, I kind of fast forwarded through it, but hopefully we can get that uh, in the footage there. So yeah, what she's done here, she's cast darkness and... Uh, Luckily, it was a red dragon, which I can control, and now I don't have to worry much about uh, this guy at all. But uh, we were able to steal the Maneater Knife, which is a rare steal from her, and is next to the Chicken Knife, I think the second most powerful uh, weapon, or uh, not weapon, but that's the word I'm looking for. Can I use that on you? Can't remember. I can! There we go. Exile to the left of Dimension. But uh, yeah, the second most powerful knife in the game, uh, which you can't use. Uh, oh yeah, it's, um, let's see if we can find it here. It should be toward the bottom. The Maneater Knife, only equipable by the Dancer. Hmm. Well, let's change you uh, back into a Dancer since I want to do that anyway. And let's give you two-handed, sure, man-eater. And take that chicken knife off. You don't get that. Let's take a quick look here. So yeah, the uh, chicken knife is still better, but the man-eater is really, 
really good. It's also a bit of a bugged item um, in the sense that it's a knife, but it actually receives double damage uh, from the jump command, which only spears are supposed to have. Um, this is only useful in like one fight, so don't worry about it. But uh, what I'm gonna do in between episodes here is I'm gonna steal another man-eater knife uh, so that I have a second one because they're pretty useful to have. Um, I probably, I might end up using both of them. I probably only will end up using one, but I wanted to at least uh, pick one up for now because they're really, really good. And I have a few uses uh, for having at least one of them on. But anyway, that's pretty much all the time for today. Sorry, today's episode was a little disjointed. Uh, I was trying to get a bunch of things working and they didn't seem to work. So I don't even know if we're a full length at this point because I've cut multiple attempts out of this episode. Uh, or I will in editing anyway. But yeah, that, like I said, that's all for today. And next time we are going to move on to some of the side quests available in this game, including getting some nice rewards. Like, uh, some new summons? Maybe a new job class. That's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.